Hello. Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to talk about the new features of Ruby 2.0, the next major version of Ruby. So this talk will be a pure Ruby talk. I mean, not a Rails talk. Um, sorry for the bit misleading title. <laughs> All right. Um, my name is Akira Matsuda. I'm Matsuda on GitHub, probably, probably known as a author of Kaminari. Um, and a underbar Matsuda on Twitter. I uh, became a member of the CRuby core team since one year ago in New Orleans during the um, RubyConf last year. And I'm the founder of, I believe, the most active um, Japanese Ruby user group in Japan named asakusa.rb. So let's begin. As I'll told you, I'm going to talk about Ruby 2.0. Ruby 2.0 is planned to be released on the next February. Well, it's just three or four months since today. And Matt once stated that Ruby 2.0 will be 100% compatible with um, current stable version of Ruby. Oh, wow, who can believe it? <laughs> <laughs> At least, to be honest, I don't. <laughs> but anyway, um, whether or not you believe or not, the next Ruby is um, said to be 100 comp compatible with the current stable version of Ruby, which means any of your existing application would, should still work, just work with Ruby 2.0 without making any change. And not only that, Ruby 2.0 has absolutely awesome new features, a lot of new features on which I'm going to focus on today. So that means in total, it's a 200% Ruby. You know, that's why we call it Ruby 2.0.0. So, the new features. We just had the feature freeze event last week. So, what I'm talking today will basically be included in the 2.0 stable. Today, I'm going to talk about these four big features particularly. Refinements, module prepend, innumerable lazy, and keyword arguments. I'm going to describe, the, I'm not going to describe their internals deeply, but instead, I'm going to tell you about some stories behind the, each of these features, and I'm going to show you some useful real-world sample codes. <coughs> Sorry. As for the internals, don't ask me. Ask Koichi. Where's Koichi? <laughs> yes. So the first one, refinements. The feature called refinements was created by Shugo Maeda. I guess many of you still remember that he talked about his plan of this feature at RubyConf. Um, I think it was 2010, I think. The author, Shugo, is his math boss <laughs> at the company named NACL. That means he's one of the highest majesty in the Ruby community. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he's also a chairman, chairman of Ruby Association, RubyOR.jp which runs Ruby Grand Program and hosts a conference named um, the Ruby World Conference, which will be held in the Ruby City Matsue in next week in Japan. Oh, and he recently joined a um, user group, Asakusa.rb. So refinements. Refinements are, in short, um, a clever way of monkey patching. Um, as a background, there is a problem that monkey patching by traditional class opening 
is considered to be sometimes dangerous or even harmful because it affects all instances in the um, Ruby process. For example, well, there's an instance of person named Matt, and then adding a new, um, new attribute onto the person class for another person named Shugo. Um, the new attribute will also be added to the former Matt object. Do you know what I mean? Yes. So, refinements are invented to improve this situation and provide a better way of monkey patching. The feature called refinements are consists of these two, two new methods, module refine and kernel using. So let's see how to use them. Module refine. This is probably the simplest way of using module refine. You see, um, here in a module named foo, um, adding a new method to string class and calling it underneath. So, what's the difference between good old new, a uh, good old monkey patching and this technology? Um, the difference is that you cannot call the method outside of this foo module, right? In other words, the effects of this um, def say thing here um, is confined to um, only the scope of this foo module. Then the next method, using, having the same refinement module foo, um, Now you can set the ability of the module onto any other module or class using, using keyword. In this example, um, here's another class named bar um, that declares using foo, like this. And then the same method um, added by foo can be called inside the bar class as well. The using method can also be used in a module like this. This time, the bar, bar is not a class but a module. And you can invoke the method, say, um, by a module eval. Now the module can of course be an anonymous module. So this way you can locally use the method, um, the, the same method, without affecting the outside world, outside, outside world class, uh, I'm sorry, world string. So if you're familiar with JavaScript or other kind of like functional programming language, you might think that you can use the lambda or proc for limiting the scope, um, the lexical scope. But unfortunately, that's not true. In this example, um, once you use the foo module in the, the lambda, um, it affects all the string outside of the lambda scope. Actually, the world string now has the same method. Because um, you always need, the, need a block in order to limit the scope of using. If you, need a, if you really need a proc that um, using refinements, you can do it this way. So, so that's the brief brief description of the refinements feature. Pinch also. Did you get it? So, <laughs> I guess 
you know, probably wondering how it can be used in a real world applications. So I just prepared several sample applications, sample libraries in my GitHub repository. The first one is called RSpec Refinements. The story behind this library is this syntax. I do prefer this, this should syntax over the uh, expect and block syntax. In my opinion, this should think syntax is the taste of RSpec, I believe. But the reason the should syntax is going to be deprecated nowadays is that the should method is directly defined on the, the core basic class, basic, basic object class, I'm sorry. And just requiring RSpec um, actually changes the uh, test target application, which basically never happened, right? So, um, but I just want to use the should method only in the specs, but I don't want to change the whole application behavior. So let's see if I can solve this problem using refinements. The RSpec refinements is the name of the project. The code is available on GitHub, and you can also gem install. The code is like this. Um, can you see it? What the gem does is simply undefines the should and should not at first, and redefines these methods using refinements then inject the um, refinement module into RSpec example group in the before hook. That's all. It's super simple. And this is how it works. You see, the normal should method just works as usual, but the should method is not available outside of the example group. So. Just bundling this gem onto your project will make your all spec a bit cleaner, I think. Next. Okay, the next project is the one called Active Record Refinements. The Active Record Refinements is doing something similar to um, Renee Miller's Squeal library. It lets you rewrite this active, this ugly active record query as this. What it does is um, it extends active record weird method to take a block, and inside the block you can use some um, operator on on symbol symbol instance um, such as not or greater than or like, et cetera, et cetera. And in, in this gem, the column names are symbol and like squeal. And the code is unbelievably simple thanks to refinements. So here's the code again. You can also gem install. Um, so let's take a look at the code. Firstly, there's a module that refines the symbol class um, to be able to respond to these operator methods. Um, oh, by the way, that percent i literal here is also a Ruby 2.0 new feature that composes an array of symbols. <laughs> what? And? and? Uh, Th that's not an official feature. <laughs> but you see what it means. <laughs> and then creating another module defining the where method to which if not block given, um, then just call super at the very bottom. Else, evals the given block and using a refinement module in the previous slide, using this. Then convert the result of this, uh, of this array 
object into the RL node. That's it. So then finally, prepending the, this, this module into um, active record query, me query methods um, module in the active record query. As for the prepend method here, um, I'm gonna de de describe about it later. So, this prepend exec is actually some, somewhat related to the super call at the bottom here. Um, yes, and that's it. That's all. As a result, the small libraries enables this. You see that these symbols respond to the not equal or greater than equal operators and then generate the SQL, SQL strings. That happens only in the where block, as you see the, um, the last example. You see, it's a really elegant way of implementing your own internal DSL, isn't it? All right, the next refinement example. Um, active support ref refinements. As a background story, I think there are two types of, two different types of libraries in active support. One is core ext and the rest. What I mean by the rest are, for example, active support, wz hash, active support json, active support, time with zone, things like that. These are basically um, just providing their own class libraries. So um, if you don't like them, you, don't, you just can't ignore them. But on the other hand, the core x libraries are actually harmful or evil just by being there because um, when they're doing, what they're doing is shamelessly overwriting um, the Ruby core libraries or standard libraries like this. So only just by requiring the core ext, this happens. And when once loaded, you know, you cannot go back to the pure core library. So, Ah, oh, by the way, along with Ruby, oh, sorry, Rails 3.0 release, Jeremy Kempu did a fantastic refactoring on active support so that we can selectively, selectively require um, the ind individual core X modules, for example. Um, in this code, the first one, two, three, four has active support try method but on the other hand, it doesn't have, it doesn't respond to days method. Because um, requiring the active support core X object try method by name, um, this way you can choose only what you really need and reduce um, the global pollution by active support. However, this approach is still not, not perfect because as I said, once you loaded the monkey patch, there's no way unloading it. So in this case, you cannot unload the try method. Um, particularly if you're writing server-side Ruby applications, this would be uh, very dangerous. Um, for example, imagine you have a Rails controller like this. It looks like um, the required numeric time at the first line enables the three days ago in the middle. So before and after someone touches this controller, the behavior of numeric class changes. Imagine how it's dangerous. And actually, um, um, Rails framework requires active support all by default, so 
this code wouldn't be so dangerous indeed in your normal Rails application. But you know, this, this case is just an example. So, so how can we more effectively and safely load access support monkey patches? Um, it should be wonderful if you can arbitrarily load particular access support modules only inside certain limited lexical scope. Um, yes, time for appointments. So, this gem does the magic, access support appointments. See GitHub for the code, and gem is also available. This example code, by using access support refinements at the first line, um, object try is enabled only in um, the first module. And you see, this way you can avoid um, disastrous global pollution. You know what I mean? I said you can stop the global pollution. That means you can save the environment. You can save this planet. Awesome. So, by using this feature, the format dangerous controller can be written like this. Now, three days ago here, just works, but it does not work outside of this controller. So, that's it. Um, please know that this active support requirement library is um, really experimental, and not at all, not all the modules there are working at this moment. Sorry, why is why is dangerous? Um. Okay, because by default, the your numeric objects did not respond to. Uh, in this case, days, but once someone um, sends a request to this controller and the Rails process loads this controller, then the, the behavior of the numeric class changes before and after the, that request. That will cause some unexpected error. So, ah, oh. so, Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you one more important thing. Um, refinements are experimental, and <laughs> <laughs> it could be reverted suddenly. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> Hope not. <laughs> All right. So now it's finished. Um, then let's move on to the next feature. And I think I spent half of my presentation on time. Module prepend. The story behind this in, in early Davis Rails, we had alias method chain, um, which was initially created by James Buck. Consider there's a class named A having a method foo. And you want to add some new features onto the existing foo method. Um, for this purpose, you can use alien method chains like this. Um, the difference between the alias method chain and normal method overriding is that, um, not at all, is that you don't need to copy and paste the whole method of the original foo method. Make sense? So, as a real world, real world example, here's a very simple um, code that extends active, active record 3's page method, I'm sorry, relation class, um, relation all method to take a page option to return the paginated, paginated query results. You see, the logic here is very simple piece of code. But to tell you the truth, 
this is actually like 90% of communally gems us. <laughs> so, um, alias method chain is certainly useful, but on the other hand, it's, it has some um, kind of known problems. Now, consider there's a class having two alias method chains in one class, I'm um, sorry, in one single foo method. Then um, let's call one, one of the without methods named foo without bar. The foo, foo is extended by bar and baz and I'm calling a foo without bar method. Can anyone tell what's gonna happen? The answer is that foo without bar method skips not only bar, but also it skips bar and baz. Who can expect this? The method name foo without bar lies. It should be like foo without bar and baz, right? So, the actual example of this problem is like this. On a bit, a little bit old active record. Um, actually, um, it uses the old ver older version of active record, heavily used um, alias method chain. So, calling a method named save without dirty actually skips not only dirty, but Dirty and validation. So um, calling save without dirty immediately saves a un invalid record into the DB. This is so dangerous. And consider if you installed more than two monkey patching plugins that LA method chaining um, onto one same method. The same thing should happen. It's, you know, it's really, it, it's possible. And, you know, these, um, these two, mon uh, two monkey patching plugins should invoking the without methods internally. So nobody can tell what's gonna happen. So this is a problem. So since rail three, the rail score code are gradually abandoning LS method chain and switching to more like modular architecture. For example, this commit by Yehuda um, totally eliminated the use of LS method chain from active record, which was done in two years ago. For example, like this. Um, is just replacing the use of alias method chain into um, method override and super call. So the former uh, full bar bears example can be written like this in this way. Using separate modules for uh, bar and bears and call super in each module, then include each of these modules into the um, target A quest. <laughs> There's a rule though, or a restriction. The original foo method has to call super. In other words, you, cannot, you, you can only extend methods that originally called super. But in many cases, what we'd like to do is to extend a method that does not call super inside, right? So how can we monkey patch this method without using a list method chain? I said, as I explained, it has some risks. So for this purpose, now we have module prepend in Ruby 2.0. This feature was proposed by Yehuda Cops and implemented by Nobu. Nobu. Right. <laughs> this is Nobu. He's there. And we call him 
the patch monster because because he's the monster. This is the whole Git log on Ruby Ruby repository that shows um, Nobu is the definitely number one Ruby committer, far above Matt's, right? <laughs> this is why we call him the patch monster, in short, patchmon. So, in my opinion, <laughs> In my opinion, Ruby is the language that Matt designs and Koichi implements and Nobu fixes. <laughs> and, and note that all of these three guys are now hired by Heroku as full-time Ruby core committers. So I really, really would like to say thank you to Heroku for sponsoring Ruby development in such efficient way. Heroku. Oh, yes. Heroku definitely pushes the uh, Ruby development forward. And it's so impressive that he's always drinking something, like <laughs> beer in this picture or sake or shochu or something, <laughs> even he's writing his Ruby patch. That is Nobu. Oh, and of course, Nobu is also a member of Asax RB. <laughs> so going back to the code, the alias method chain in this code can be rewritten like this, using module prepend. Um, you needed another module defining the same foo method. And um, just prepend the method onto the class A, right? Mm, so of course, you can prepend multiple modules, in this case, bar and bas, into the target class. Um, as Matt explained in his keynote, what prepends us is like, it's something similar to include, but the uh, another order of method invoking is just reversed. So this is um, module prepend version of the former simple pagination. Um, I think the logic is not totally the same for some reason, but anyway, it's kind of working the same. Just define, just create a module defining all methods, then prepend it onto the active record finding methods module. It's so simple. And as I already showed you, there's another example of using method uh, module prepend in the form of active record refinements gem. Do you remember? Um, this is a module defining where method and calling super inside and pre prepending that module onto um, active record query methods module. You see it's far more readable, readable easier to read than alias method chain because there's no something with something method or um, things like that. Okay, it's done. So the next feature, enumerable, enumerable lazy. This feature was proposed by um, Yutaka Hara. He lives in a Ruby city, Matsue, where, where Matt lives and He's also working for NACL, um, the company where Matt and Shugo is working. As for the background of this feature and details of this feature, um, just please just see the ticket here <laughs> on Redmine. Um, basically, what it does is, um, 
well, in each call on an enumerable object returns an enumerator instance. A new method on enumerable, enumerable named lazy returns an object of um, enumerated lazy class. And what you can do with this enumerable, enumerated lazy object is, for example, like this. Um, you know, um, every enumeration method such as map or select, zip, grip, flat map, uh, etc., on this object will will be deferred until you call two a or force. Force is just an alias of two a, I think. So this way you can treat a infinite collection like this. If you're not using lazy, um, this, will, this will never finish. But using lazy, you can um, defer the invocation of uh, select even and take only 20, um, 20 numbers. Or like this, you see it? It's basically the same. It's a script that um, picks up um, Friday the 13th. So here's another really elegant example of using enumerable lazy by uh, Waihara's boss, Shugo Maeda. And uh, actually, besides of this sort of script, um, I'd be thinking of a usage of enumerable lazy in Rails application because I titled like um, Ruby 2.0 in Rails, but unfortunately I couldn't find any good example on Rails so far. So I'm sorry, there's no gem for this feature. And maybe I can use it as a backend of Active Record query interface, I think, or maybe for example, I can use on um, Action Pack Live Controller, I'm not sure, or Sprockets related something, I'm, I'm not sure. So anyway, um, I could not come up with any good example, I'm sorry. So please tell me if you find any. Anyway, in this example, um, Shugo is implementing a Ruby version of Unix root count command um, using two enumerable lazies. One is that it rates over um, file names and one that um, lazily differs the uh, files each lines then, then counts the words. Um, he says it's like um, faster and um, consumes less memory. So, so the next feature is keyword arguments. The keyword argument implementation was done by Yusuke Enzo. He's really an amazing, super geeky hacker. Uh, he's a coin artist, um, and he's the release manager of the next release, Ruby 2.0. So actually, he, he controls the management, um, the release of Ruby 2.0. Um, so, the background. This is a well-known and widely used idiom for imitating um, keyword argumentation thing. Um, just use a hash object like this in the uh, method argument. And in combination with um, Ruby 1.9 style hash syntax, it perfectly looks as if there's a language, native language support on um, keyword arguments. 
it really looks like like Objective C or C sharp or something, you know. Or, mm -hmm. but we need some tweak in order to use this method in our real 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 applications, um, like this. One is the tweaking the default values. Um, for example, if the foo method takes the default values, A defaults to one, B defaults to two, we do something like this, right? We need to merge a default values hash into the argument. Or active support has a special command, uh, I mean, special method named reverse merge, which some kind of, um, kind of, not at all. Looks better. I mean, kind of readable, <laughs> but it's doing um, basically the same thing. So, um, the next problem is multiple hashes. There, there are there's tons of. Um, Another method inside Rails that takes two or more hash um, hash arguments. So there's actually a method named button two takes two hash arguments. One is option, and the other is HTML options. And if you would like to, if you want to pass in a any another option into the last letter HTML options, you need to, you need to um, write the uh, you know, hash lid row onto the first action new parameter. Otherwise, the whole arguments will put into the first hash. So this kind of looks ugly. And handling slant operated. Um, when the uh, method having splat operator that takes um, very variable arguments, um, and yes, this is this op, uh, often happens. Like um, and takes the very last. Um, arguments of the splat op option as the hash. So this does this ex extract option also um, defines an exit support like this. It just, if the uh, given arguments last is a hash, then treat it as a hash. And last week, um, assert valid keys. Um, in order not to accept a valid argument keys, there's a method called assert valid keys in access support. This is the implementation of assert valid keys. So simple. And this is how, you, how it works, right? So we need, um, these kind of lot of um, tweaks or workarounds in order to treat the hash, hash argument. So the Ruby two point keyword arguments are. Uh, I only have one more minute. <laughs> Sorry. So um, it reads default values. It does, and. It can also treat multiple hashes and split operator like this. And it includes assert valid keys um, by default, right? So we need none of them. We need none of these workarounds. The Ruby 2.0 keyword argument just does it. So, the conclusion. 
um, everyone can upgrade a Ruby version immediately. Or, I mean, if you're brave enough, <laughs> you could do so immediately. I mean, the SVN front version is also aimed to be totally compatible with Ruby 1.3. So if any of your existing application, um, except for C extensions, does not work on Ruby trunk, that is a Ruby's bug. So if that happens to you, you're so lucky that you hit a chance to contribute to Ruby 2.0. <laughs> then please file a ticket onto Redmine if you encounter any such a problem. Or else, if you're, not, if you're still not using 193, <laughs> um, now's the time to move. Because Ruby 1.8 support will be dead very soon. You should abandon your Ruby 1.8 application as soon as possible. And stand by for the coming Ruby 2.0. So we encourage you to use Ruby 2.0 and use these new features because it's useful and fun. Um, you know, if everyone uses these new features, then it will probably um, speed up the transition to Ruby 2.0. So let's use 2.0 and let's deprecate 1.3 as soon as possible. That's all, thank you.